Escaping Denver, Episode 7, The Stranger. I know it seems selfish to make it all about me, especially with where we left off with Noah and Sarah, but I have some good news for once. I have a hearing about that official warning I got for smoking in my building. Turns out I get my day in court. Best case scenario, I get my warning revoked, but I don't even care about that. They're going to give me five minutes to plead my case, and the worst that could happen is exactly where I'm already at. I'm going to hit them with every word of the day I've ever learned and maybe even cuss a little. Never give an angry man a platform, Walter. Thing is, before all this started, if one of my neighbors had started smoking inside, I would have lost my mind too. But here I am, nonetheless, Mr. Hypocrite. It took just hearing about Noah and Sarah's situation for me to change the type of person I am. Boom, back to smoking more than a pack a day after having quit for years. I'd bite my fingernails instead, but those are long gone, and I'm not sleeping. I check the locks 50 times a day, and, well, really, I can't imagine what actually going through this is doing to them. See, I don't blame Sarah for wanting to head back into the maze. Mazes can be solved. It's completely rational. And I totally see where Noah is coming from, too. Wanting to trust the ally and press on? That's hopeful. I wouldn't have made either of these choices, because I doubt I would have had the guts to leave my cell, let alone face what they've faced, so I'm really not in a position to judge. They're both doing what they think is best to survive, which is really all you can expect out of anyone. And I'm doing what I think is best too, or at least doing my best to untangle these messages into some sort of narrative. So without further ado. Sarah's gone. Or whatever her name really is. She's gone though. She packed up and left. Took the food and the charger, but left me the gun, so there's that. I honestly don't know what the next move is. I I know I have to head down to the operating theater and through the door, but I have this, this desire, compulsion, maybe, to go after her. I keep thinking I'm looking after her, but when I think back, she's mostly been looking after me. Maybe that's what it is. I'm scared to be alone. I'm collecting water and and whatever else I can find here. Do you think food from the 90s would still be any good? Probably not. She's going to die, right? Going off on her own in the hall with the monster, there's no way she makes it. Or me, for that matter. Why did I let her go? It's, It's different when you're alone. Scarier more real. It's not like she was protecting me from monsters or anything, but it felt reassuring to just have someone else there seeing what I'm seeing. Even this, the recording, feels silly alone, like I'm a coroner tracking my findings. That's what it is, the coroner thing. I feel like I'm my own coroner and and these messages are just a post-mortem. I'm going to collect what I can, then head to the door. Noah, out. Hear that? Chase me in here. Good news is that it's too big to fit. Bad news is it's too fucking big to fit. It's huge. A minivan with jaws. I didn't get a great look at it, but is there such a thing as an alligator with fur? Yeah. You keep snapping, you son of a bitch. Your big ass can't fit in here. (sighs) Stinks like that stairwell full of bones. Like death. I have no idea where I am. I'm in one of those tubes for air circulation. Not the one I was heading for, but necessity and all that jazz. Just... There. I left Noah. I didn't leave him behind, but I did leave him. I'm heading back to the maze. I mean, if this really is a test, maybe I can pass it. I've lasted this long. Plus, he wanted to follow the lady on the phone, the one he doesn't know at all, which I just couldn't do anymore. My gut says to head upwards, 
not down. Why didn't I trust my gut? You should always trust your gut. <laughs> With my luck, it'll be waiting at the top. And Noah said something about these air tubes being like a termite mound and got me thinking. For these to be for air circulation, don't they eventually need to reach air? The one we came down led to that big fan thing, but maybe some of these tubes lead out. At the very least, they lead up. And it's steep as hell, so climbing and talking is just not an option. I left Noah with the gun. I don't know how to use it anyway, so it would have just slowed me down. I found a satchel along the way and have been filling it with what I can find that's useful. A pair of scissors, an ancient first aid kit, and a bottle I filled with water. I also took the food. Which I think is fair because I found it. I've already shared more than I had to. And same with the charger. He should just conserve his battery. I've left him on full charge, so if he ever gets signal, if. This is so stupid. If you're judging her, just stop it. Self-preservation is not selfish. It's not heroic, but it's definitely not selfish. There is a fine line between doing bad and doing what you need to to survive. Noah is a grown-ass man. I'm sure he'll be able to scrounge what he needs. I'm just way more concerned for Sarah, who's actively climbing back into the nightmare maze that we know to be dangerous. And going forward, the timeline's going to get a little wonky. Always does when they get separated. So let's just stay with Sarah a while. Shlub say compromise. Kaja sam what ni hlopots. Yeah, let's do no compromise. <laughs> Can you guys not? D56 and 52 are loose. The sooner we find them... Those let's go, let's go. Yes, I'm scared. You both know what's down here. Let's get a move on. I don't want to end up... <laughs> They're gone. Three of them. I could only see them from ways down, but they had those big guns. If they got down here, there must be a way back up. The coast looks clear as far as I can tell. But I keep getting whiffs of that monster stink, so I don't know what to do. <sighs> Shit, I'm just gonna go for it. They came from this direction, but I don't recognize this at all. Same looking hallway, but I don't think Noah and I were here. <gasps> oh, shit, shit, shit. I knew I smelt that thing. I climbed into another tunnel, but it sounds like they're heading my way. If I can... I fell asleep for a while, passed out. I climbed up the tube further until I couldn't hear that thing eating. I just passed the fuck out. I don't think I've ever been that scared. You know, I see myself as a strong woman. I speak my mind. I don't let people take advantage of me. I stand up for myself, but that, that was different. I froze. No instinct to run or fight, I just frozen. My, my muscles actually hurt from how tense I got. How am I ever going to survive this? It's impossible. I saw... I checked. I shouldn't have, but I had to look. The monster left almost nothing behind. Just looked like a pile of wet clothes. I mean, why did I look? I knew I wouldn't like... Ah! Easy on her. They still want to examine her. But Andre. She didn't kill Andre. Let's get her upstairs. Hey. Look at me. Where's your friend? The man. Where's he at? I don't know what. I don't know what you're. Ah! My friend wants to do this to you. I'm the one trying to be reasonable. Where's your friend? I honestly don't know what you're talking about. I don't know who you're talking about. Loyalty. From you. It's almost like she thinks she's people. Yuri? Uh. Where are you going? We need to get our ass upstairs. Seb says Jetrivaya. 
then shut it off. What the what? I mean, is that monster a dinosaur? Let's talk about it. It sounded like it by the way they crunched down on a human like it was nothing. Plus, Sarah called it a hairy alligator, which beyond its terrible imagery sounds like something that's Jurassic. What's crazy is that the monster isn't even my chief concern. Or the soldiers, for that matter. It's what the soldier said. She thinks she's people. What the hell is that? It's not what you say about a human being. It's what you say about a dog that watches TV. Are these guys so calloused about what they're doing that they've disconnected the people from the act? Or... Hmm. Or did he mean something else entirely? What if Sarah and Noah aren't people? Like they're artificial intelligence or, or robots and they were just set free on the world and now being brought back in for factory testing. Or aliens. They could be aliens or something. Either way, they don't know what they are. If they really are something. Now I'm sitting here debating if I really am what I think I am. Isn't that a thing? I think, therefore, I am. Am I? I am, right? I gotta be. But what is she? There's no way I ever leave this place. It really is impossible. You know how I know? They left me with my fucking phone again. I mean, how better to flex your dominance than by reminding your test subjects how futile their situation is? Go ahead, keep your phone. It won't be any use to you anyway. <sighs> Shit sucks, I've been regretting leaving Noah. Right, I'm in a cell again. Smaller than the first one. I can actually touch both sides of the cell at the same time. There's a bed and a toilet, which feel like luxuries after the last few days. No windows, no doorknobs, and everything is way too fucking bright. My bed looks like a murder scene. My head must have still been bleeding when they dumped me on it. Now I wait. I've been here before. Not this exact cell, but something like it. Not even for the easy 28 days. I did the full 90. Rules, check-ins, curfews. Not alone either. I had to get through that surrounded by loose cannons. If I can get through that with my mind intact, I can get through this. They want me to sleep. Did the whole lights out thing, like I'm supposed to believe it's nighttime. I have my phone, you idiots. It says 1.30 in the afternoon. Maybe that's Arizona time. Does my phone change time zones when I do? How do I check that? Um, all right. MST. Mountain time? Does that make sense for Denver? I've been in the US nearly a decade, but I'm still not great with American geography. Anyway, it says it's 1.30, so not night. Nice try though, assholes! So I fell asleep. Turns out staying awake in a pitch black room is difficult at any hour. I heard a scream though, I think. Something woke me up that sounded like a scream. Maybe they found Noah. I hope they didn't. I'm still banking on him somehow saving my ass. Ah. And there's the light. I don't think I'll ever. Wait. There's a piece of paper. Must have come in when I was asleep. It's a menu? Beef bulgogi hash, avocado and tomatoes, eggs florentine. It's a fucking brunch menu. What the hell's going on here? What the hell am I supposed to do with this? Do I wait for a waiter or? Seriously? Give me this tiny little pencil too. Like one of those mini golf ones. Unbelievable. I guess I just circle one and slip it under the door. What do I order though? And how do I know it won't be poison? I am a captive after all. I may sit on this a bit before acting. What else am I gonna do with my time? You don't eat the food, right? You can't eat the food. I mean, a menu? Come on, really? 
This feels like an empty gesture to try to bring her around. The flowers after the black eye. You just, you don't trust them. You can't. Obviously. Right. Let's backtrack a bit to the whole time zone thing. I don't know enough about cell phones to know if they'd continue to update if they were deep underground, but is there a chance her phone is wrong about the time? I'd say probably, yeah. But I bet it's still a good barometer for the passage of time, even if it is wrong. Plus, Denver does fall in the mountain standard time zone, and so does Arizona for that matter. At least for half the year. I don't know. Just don't eat the food, right? You'd think I'd be recording more now that I have nothing to do, but it's the opposite, really. I don't want to waste my battery. It's been 12 hours since I first woke up here, in this cell. They've done two more cycles of the lights out. I can't quite understand it, but like clockwork, I end up falling asleep every time. I'm just so exhausted after everything, and while I'm not exactly safe, it certainly feels safe enough to sleep. Food came. I ate it. Avocados and tomatoes. Tasted fresh, even. I debated for a while after it came, long enough for the toast to get cold. But in the end, I caved. Maybe I'm not... How did I not notice that? My sheets, the bloody ones, have been changed. How is that even possible? I've been here the whole time. But I keep falling asleep. Those sacks of shit. When I'm asleep, they must come in. How out of it must I be? Unless they're drugging the air. They're, dr they're drugging the fucking air. Sure, eat my fresh avocados, but try not to breathe because we've drugged the fucking air. I don't like this. I know, understatement. But it's the control. They're trying to take what little control I still have down here. It's invasive. It's getting right under my skin. I'm at their mercy, apparently. It's a situation that doesn't so much scare me as piss me right off. Lights out again. What do they want to do to me now? I'll stay awake. They really must drug the air. It lasted like five minutes before succumbing to sleep. You hear that too, right? It's not like in my head or whatever. It doesn't sound like Noah. Weird to say, but I think I know Noah's screams. Looks like there were more of us. At least one more of us. It sounds like he's putting up a fight. <gasps> they killed him! They killed him! They're trying to get into my door! You can't come in! You've opened my door! Now what? I've not been dramatic. She actually stopped recording there, or at least the recording stopped there, intentional or not. So it seems like a natural place for us to end. But before that, just what is going on? Is the experiment over and are they just culling their subjects, clearing out this batch to make room for the next one? Kind of sounds like it. Explains the screams and the last meal for that matter. The gunfire does seem a little archaic for a group that can poison the air, so... Maybe somebody fought back and they had to use force. It's optimistic. So who's the stranger at the door then? They had keys, which implies they're in on it, but if they really were with the collective and hell-bent on killing their captives, wouldn't they have opened fire the moment they got through the door? I think so. So what I'm thinking is this new guy, person, whatever, the one who kicked open the door, they're not with the collective. I think they're there to free Sarah, as crazy as that sounds. Whether they're another captive or some outside force, I don't know yet. They could even be Noah for all we know. No, she would have recognized him. You'd think she'd have said something if it was Noah. Then again, Sarah always seems to be holding back on us. Sure, she drops little nuggets from her past. She did the full 90 days instead of the easy 28. That's, that's rehab. Maybe drug rehab, but sounds like some form of rehab. But I don't think any amount of rehab would prepare you for this, could prepare you for this. She has training. Maybe army, definitely medical of some sort. But again, why hold back on us? Why hold back on Noah? Why not just tell the guy who you really are? Hi, my name is Sarah, and I've got medical training and can help. It just doesn't make sense. I'm going to keep trying to untangle these Sarah messages so we can get some sort of answers on that front. 
Big thank you to Warren who wrote in telling me I should be able to read the metadata of the messages I've been getting to make organizing them easier. It's a great idea. I just don't know where to look for the metadata. So if you understand that and can explain it to me, please shoot me an email to escapingdenverpod at gmail.com. Thank you to Curious Cast for helping us get these messages out. And I'll see you in a couple of weeks for another episode of Escaping Denver.